Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. In today's video, I am working on the October Patreon reward. The theme I chose was pastel witches. And if you are interested in receiving this as a mini print in the mail, you have until October 31st to sign up. And if you are interested in a lower tier, I also have uh, lower tiers that uh, include exclusive videos, sketchbook pages, wallpapers, and more. Plus, I also have decided I'm going to start doing monthly podcasts as well if you're into that sort of thing. So I'll have the link in the description if you're interested in supporting me over there. No pressure though, of course. And as you might have guessed from the title of this video, instead of talking about the process, I will be discussing the ever so hot topic of should you go to art school? I would like to make a very strong disclaimer that this is just my personal opinion based on my own experience and what I've observed from my peers. Everyone is going to have their own experience that will vary from mine. So their opinion will be different from mine as well. So ultimately, please do your research and make the decision based on what is best for you and your own situation. But before we dive further, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. As an independent creator, I have a lot of different tasks that I need to juggle. And if I'm being honest, updating my website is usually not a priority. And in the past, I would really struggle to actually update my website. However, with Squarespace, they've made adding and changing my website way easier and thus a much quicker process. You're able to edit images directly on the platform, which is so handy for me since I photograph most of my work with my phone or iPad, so the lighting's not always perfect. And another great feature is the automatic image scaling, which also allows me to skip having to use a third party application to edit the images. Because even though I have different ratio, like different sized images here, I'm able to quickly pick a grid style that suits them. And voila, I have a perfect gallery without having them awkwardly cropped and without having to change the existing files. It's so much more streamlined and way more efficient. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the real video here. So in case you happen to be new, uh, and I think maybe some context will help this whole conversation, I am currently a full-time artist and I have been since September 2020, so a little over two years. And my primary income is from YouTube, sponsorships, Patreon, and my online shop. And I also occasionally do art markets and artist alleys, but I wouldn't consider that to be part of my main income. And uh, yeah, previous to me being full-time, I was a part-time artist and a part-time retail worker for many, many years. So immediately after I had finished high school, I did a one year of art fundamentals at Sheridan College, which is a program that essentially allows you to sharpen your skills in a multitude of kind of art fields and you can build your portfolio. So for example, we had life drawing, we had 3D art, which was like sculpture. Um, and then there was also technical drawing. There was an illustration design course. So you kind of get the idea. There was a little bit of everything so that people could fill out their portfolios and just like develop their art skills, you know, their fundamentals essentially. So yeah, for me, I thought that was a great way of narrowing down what exactly I wanted to do as well, because I knew that I wanted a career in the arts, but I just didn't know exactly what that was going to be. And I really just wanted to avoid doing a leap year at in high school. I was like, get me the F out of here. <laughs> so yeah, that was my that was my whole reasoning. 
And yeah, eventually I decided to pursue graphic design, mainly due to the fact that I was convinced it was the practical choice. And yeah, even though I knew deep down that I was much more interested in illustration, I just felt like at the time it was the safer option in terms of, you know, my job prospects after the fact and my mom was already not super stoked about me pursuing the arts in the first place so this was a compromise in my opinion or what i thought um, at the time to to pursue design because um, that was a way of me reassuring her that i was definitely going to have a job when i finished school so I would also like to mention that while Sheridan, where I did the one year of art fundamentals, I would definitely consider that, like classify that as an arts college. I'm sure some of you know about it or have heard about it. It's pretty well known for their animation program. Uh, they have turned out Pixar alum. <laughs> And um, where I ended up going to school for graphic design, St. Lawrence College, I would not consider that an arts college. And the reason for that is because graphic design was the only creative program there. There was technically also advertising, but I don't know if that's technically really that creative. But yeah, those were the only programs that were creative at all. Everything else at that school was something else. <laughs> I don't remember what else was offered at that school, but yeah. So yeah, ultimately, like, I don't regret going into graphic design or going to this college because I'm pretty happy with where I am now. But I just think that it's important to mention this because I do think that had I gone to an arts college, my experience probably would have been a little different because like one of the reasons I think why the my experience was so specific was because this program was the only because it was the only creative program all of our semesters were laid out very specifically we didn't have any electives or alternative classes cl class options so everybody attended all of the exact same classes together as one unit <laughs> So I want to keep this discussion kind of on the casual side here. So I mostly just have bullet points here that I'm using to kind of gather my thoughts. In my first year in graph design, there were about 60 students. But by the time we graduated, there were less than 30 of us which is quite small, I believe, based on what I've heard from other friends' college experiences. And I think in a lot of ways that we actually benefited from having a small class because it really allowed us to build meaningful relationships with each other, but as well with our professors. Like I've heard from other people that, you know, the classes were so large that it was overwhelming to try to make friends with anyone and that you didn't really have any kind of relationship with your professor because the the, the class were the classes were just so big um so for for me i was actually you know able to have one-on-one -on -one with my t-shirt my teachers um with you know asking about projects or being able to have you know smaller group critiques when we were doing a project and as well we were able to help each other when you know we needed help with projects or we needed you know um, assistance on learning how to use something learning how to do something on a program or with printing and it also helped i think motivate us by being surrounded by other creatives and that we're all doing the same project, we're all doing the same thing, we're there, you know, for the same reasons. And for me, I was 18, 19 when I first was um, in this program. And at that age, I did not have the motivation to do this just entirely on my own. And so being able to have 
very specific deadlines and a project with certain criterias. It gave my life structure and it gave me a schedule because I think at that age, especially if left to totally like my own devices, I really don't think I would have done much. Um, it really, I think, was crucial at that age for me to have a, a lot of structure and to have direction from a professor and from a program. We have so many resources online these days that people are very, very well able to learn on their own. But yeah, at, at 18, there was no way I was going to teach myself how to use InDesign or all the intricacies of printing and setting up a file on my own. And that was another big benefit for me with school was obviously learning from professionals that have worked or are working in the industry. And they, you know, opened up my kind of uh, creative world because they, you know, taught me about things that I wouldn't have necessarily thought sought out on my own. Um, a big one for me was typography. That was something that I never had an interest in prior to going to school for design and ended up being something that I really, really loved during school and ha still have an interest in after the fact, even though I don't, you know, do a lot of typography heavy stuff anymore. But for sure, that would have been something that I would have overlooked um, had I not gone to school. Another huge benefit to going to art school that doesn't actually apply to me that much since I went to school for graphic design. And again, the college that I went to was not an art heavy college, but if you do go to an art heavy college, equipment and facilities will be a huge benefit. So if you go into say ceramics or pottery, you'll have access to those kinds of facilities and equipment. Or if you do silk screening or printmaking, um, those types of environments um, will be really, really beneficial, like a, a big studio with life drawing, things like that. Those will be really, really valuable that would otherwise not be as accessible to you if you were self-taught. And another big benefit for me anyway with going to school that I don't think a lot of people talk about is just the general life experiences. For me, when I went to college, I moved out. And I think that being in college and living on your own is the perfect transitional period to being in the quote unquote adult real world. <laughs> because there is like a security blanket around being in school since you are not focused on making an income and having a career. You're just focused on education. But then when you have that on one end, you're also able to learn just life, ex like life skills, such as cooking, cleaning, maintaining bills and things like that. But without the crushing debt and depression of adulthood. <laughs> so yeah, and then also just the social element, I think that shouldn't be discounted. I think not only does it enrich your life in general, but also social skills is important when you are, you know, in a work environment with other people, with interviews, for me, I did not have a great high school experience. And so when I went to college and I was suddenly amongst people that had similar interests to me and were also creative and just were, you know, on a much more similar wavelength as I was, I was really able to come out of my shell and just feel so much more comfortable with who I was and Ultimately, I think gaining that type of confidence just sort of extends out into everything in my life. And I don't think 
if I had the college experience that I did, I would not have the same confidence to be able to have a YouTube channel and do voiceovers like this and do live streams. You know, it all just sort of stems and um, extends into everything else. And so I really think that the social life experiences is really important. Uh, and also I had a part-time job when I was in college. I did when I was in high school as well, but that's also another kind of life experience of juggling lots of different things at once. So again, those are like very specific to, to me, but I think is worth mentioning for people who might be in a similar situation. And then of course, post-college, something that is commonly mentioned in pretty much any industry is that networking and who you know is really important. And in some cases, this is true. I have actually been given or been connected to freelance jobs and job offers through my professors. Um, I had gotten, yeah, illustration work through them because they remembered, you know, the type of work that I made and they referred to me when something came up. And I've actually been offered to discuss like teaching positions recently. It's not something that I'm currently interested in, but again, it's just it's just a good thing to have these types of connections um, in case, you know, I do decide I want to teach down the line or if I need more freelance work. And another thing is from my classmates. Um, like I said, I was able to make meaningful relationships with my peers and I'm still friends with many of them. And not only just like on a personal level, but also I'm able to go to them for advice on mul multitudes of different things, whether it be a technical thing with a program or with pricing or, you know, other types of resources. And yeah, even though I am now an artist, I definitely had a lot of transferable skills that from graph design, like I mentioned before, I learned how to use certain programs when I was in school, like Photoshop and InDesign, which is those are things that I do use. And as well as overall branding and layout and things like that, I think I'm able to use for my own business. And I'm essentially kind of a brand. So marketing and that kind of stuff is some is part of the whole package. And I think that having a graphic design background really, you know, helped me with the that kind of stuff. However, while I obviously had overall a good experience with going to school, I do want to talk about cons, of course. So obviously the first one being cost. Going to post-secondary is not cheap. So that is definitely a big hurdle for people. And for me, I did take out student loans and work part-time during high school and while I was in school. So that's how I managed. You can also apply for grants and things like that as well, depending on where you are. But you know, that is something to consider, obviously. You don't get to choose your professors and unfortunately not all of them are going to be great. I have had my share of good and not so great teachers and yeah, the the bad teachers, it can be kind of bad. Like they can be pretty demoralizing. They can really dampen your experience with school, with that particular subject, um, the relationship that you have with your art. Like it is it does create like a, a huge impact, like the the teachers that you have. So unfortunately, that is kind of out of your control but at the very least you just have to make the most of the situation and hopefully just pay attention to the good teachers that you have and that's that was the mindset that I ended up having was just trying not to take to heart the the things and the experience that I had with my not so great teachers and give more weight to the good experiences and the, the teachers that I did enjoy. Also worth mentioning, I went to school from 2009 to 
2013. So there was a different mindset about the industry. So with graphic design and that that program, they they just kind of drilled into our minds that the path was that you worked as an intern somewhere at a studio and then hopefully just worked your way into being there full time or you just had your own graphic design business. Um, so like the, the job that I have now was not something that was really fathomable and was brand new. So it wasn't something that I had ever really considered. And I imagine going into school now, it would have been very different. Um, so had I known that I was going to be doing what I do now, I don't know. I think my trajectory would have looked a lot different. But another thing to keep in mind as well is not everybody thrives um, in like a class environment. Like everyone has a different learning style and learning speed, I guess. Like everyone learns at a different pace. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, for me at that time in my life, I needed direction. I needed a professor to give me projects and a deadline and a schedule but not everybody needs that. And if you are really disciplined and you can you know, set your own kind of schedule and seek out online resources, then that's great. Then maybe you can totally do it on your own. Um, there are so many online resources now and online schools and courses that you can take um, that I just didn't think what was quite as available to me at the time. And yeah, there are tons of artists that I love who didn't go to school for art or dropped out after like a semester because it wasn't for them. Art school, it really is not for everybody. Like it is a very specific environment. And while I've, you know, detailed all of the benefits that I had gotten, it's not for everybody. And that's perfectly fine. Because when I really think about the scope of what I do, a lot of the skills that I need to do what I do, I learned after school. And that is something that you definitely should know is that even when you're done going to school, if you choose to, you're always going to need to be learning. You're always going to need to adapt, evolve and learn new things. And so for me, I had to learn how to edit videos, shoot videos, do audio. I did not learn any of that in school. And that is something that has been invaluable to what I do for work now. And another thing is that the bulk of my kind of work experience, I guess, has also been of my own making. The All the sponsorships and collaborations and things that I've gotten were mainly through people just finding me on the internet. So me posting my artwork online, whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube, and people have just reached out to me for work. So that's not something that I necessarily needed to rely on school for. And same with the kind of in-person friend connection. I have also made many friends and mutuals online through Instagram and on YouTube. And some are, you know, just mutuals online and some are friends that I actually hang out with in person. So again, these are all things that while I have benefited from being in school, I have also done a lot of it outside of school and post school as well. Another thing too is I went to school for design. So a lot of my painting and drawing skills have been mostly self-driven. And when I was in school, a lot of our projects when it required some kind of visual element, you know, when some people would just use stock photos or do photography, I would take it upon myself to do an illustration, even though I didn't need to, but I did it because I wanted to, you know, use those skills and find any kind of excuse to be illustrating in my 
graphic design projects. So I really did make the most of this, the program in ways that I was able to. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, ultimately it's entirely up to you whether or not you go to school depending on what type of experience you're looking for, what type of learner you are, and where you are in your life and what your situation looks like. Again, it's just, it's gonna be different for everybody, but I hope that me talking about my experience and, you know, laying out some of the pros and the cons help you in informing your own decision. And, you know, Ultimately, I wish you the best of luck in whatever you decide to pursue. And here is a little sneak peek at the sticker reward that is going to accompany the print reward for my Patreon page. Again, the link is going to be in the description and you have until October 31st to sign up to get this piece as the art print and that sticker in the mail. Anyways, thank you so much for supporting me, whether it be on Patreon or just watching my YouTube video. I really appreciate any and all support that I get from all of you. And I hope that you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.